Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So let's start off with Molly and Christina. After, get, what, seven to ten minutes of um, them talking about how Molly has never been to her apartment for some odd reason, um, they get into the whole surrogacy thing. And I thought this conversation was... Here's the thing. Part of me appreciate this conversation. The other part of me felt like it was kind of... I don't want to sit there and say pointless, but it's pointless to the point of... You should be telling your husband this. This is what you should be doing. You should be sitting there telling your husband this. Right? I guess interesting on why she feels so strongly about it, the worries, the doubt that maybe TJ may not feel the same way, you know, like he may not want to try again for a very long time, if ever. So I felt like that was interesting, right? You can you can see the, I don't want to say desperation, but just how much she actually wants um, to have this child and to be a mother. But in some way, it's kind of pointless because it's like, you're going behind his back. You're you're looking at these potential surrogates. You're, you're talking to this agency. And you're doing this all without TJ's knowledge. So when he finds out, he's going to have another argument with you. It didn't seem like you enjoyed the last one. So why are you putting yourself through that again? And then, of course, Christina's like, you know, listen, I'll be a surrogate, which is a really bad idea. First of all, like Dolomit pointed out, it's not a good idea for first-time mothers to be sent there um, being a surrogate. So you're way too close, okay? You're way too close to, you know, every time you have like dinners and parties and birthdays and celebrations, she's going to be sent there looking at that child, of course, also being a first-time mother and being like, just sad and heartbroken by the fact that she gave that child to Molly. Yeah, she might have did it with the best of intentions, but it's going to hurt every single time that she sees him or her. So it's just a bad idea all around. And then of course, how is TJ going to feel about that? So it's just all sorts of really messy I think they personally should probably go with another surrogacy, but, you know, this is a soap opera, so we're going to sit there and make sure it's this drama, you know, drama, you know, dramatic or whatever as possible. So that's what they're going to go with, even though it's like, yeah, this is a bad idea. So Sonny and Dex meets Pikeman again, and, you know, Sonny's like, listen, I'm not going to be doing any deals with you until you find out who was a shooter. And the guy from Pikeman is like, yo, we're not, we're, we're, we're not the cops. We're not, you know, we don't, who shot you, who shot at you? Like, that's, that's not our issue. We need you to sit there and move product. So you can, I don't know why you keep asking that question pretty much. And they give him double the money to, to move this stuff around. Sonny says no. And Dex is like, that was a bad idea. Sonny thinks that, well, I'll be more trouble than I'm worth. So they'll just sit there and move on. Really? Because even Valentine said to him, yo, um, these people are dangerous. You know, like they, they are very high connected. And the same thing with Dex and the same. I'm like, bro, at this point, you're already too deep in with them. And, you know, Dex is like, you know, he said that they can sit there and just see you as trouble, as an obstacle and just remove you and find somebody else sit there and that will sit there and, and play ball. It's like, Sonny, you got yourself into a situation. Your mom should sit there and play along until you can do better. Now you're just like, oh, they're not going to, you know, I, I'm saving them from investing more into, and more money into me. It's like, no, you're really not. You know, Sonny thinks that he knows what he's doing. A lifetime of arrogance. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the whole Lois, Brooklyn, and Chasing. 
there's something that Lois says because they're you know they're in the kitchen they're, they're drinking wine they're they're chopping up onions and stuff like that and Chase is like oh man you know it's so impressive that you're able to sit there and do that you know while having those nails on it she says something that I'm not going to repeat and it's kind of an innuendo I'm just like so uh, <laughs> what, what what else could you do with those nails I mean just you know just ask them for a friend listen I don't kink shame. For most things. That's what I'll sit there and say. Now, she does bring up, you know, <sighs> Gloria, the whole marriage thing, putting Chase on the spot. Brooklyn is practically jumping out of her skin. She is definitely overreacting because Chase does not seem like he's that bothered, that vexed by. He seems like he's totally fine. It's like, why are you so. You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why are you so, like, embarrassed? It's like, he moved on past it. You should have did the same thing a long time ago. And so when Lois leaves, you know, Brooklyn just, you know, apologizes like, oh, you know, I don't want them to put any pressure on you. Be off in your face about it. This, that, and the third. He start talking about weddings. And then Chase is just like, you want to get married? And he proposes to her. And we're just like, that kind of seemed like that came out of nowhere. Um, I mean, I get it to some extent when you know, you know, but it just also seemed like it came out of left field. It was like, it wasn't that long ago that she just moved in, like less than a couple of months and you're using it, they're ready to jump the broom or whatever the hell you want to call it. I just, I don't, I'm like, at this point, it's like, boo, you're, you're an adult. You're not a, a teenage kid at this point. Um, I don't understand why it freaks her out this much. Now, the scene with... The scene with Ava and Nina. It's mostly just catching the audience up to what's been going on with Ava. Okay, fine. Kind of a pointless scene, but... My takeaway from that is that the minute that Ava got that um, picture with the, you know, on the back of it that said, you're welcome, she should have took that right to something. Nina's kind of annoyed because Nina's like, oh, you know, Sonny is at the end of me. Yeah, that's right. Because he does illegal activities, he doesn't want you involved in it. He doesn't want you implicated in it. I don't understand, like, I don't understand what's so hard for Nina to understand. Like, he doesn't want you in his business. There's, there's, he said that multiple times. There's things that he doesn't want you to know. And eventually, Nina comes down to Sonny's office. And Nina's like, oh, yeah, you know, he told me this, that, and third. But the question is, why did you not tell me? Um, because when you got together, that's, he literally said that he's going to separate you from the business. What's changed? Oh, yeah, that's kind of a stupid question. They are married now. But he's, you know, marriage aside... It doesn't change the stance. So I don't understand why she's so perplexed by that. And, you know, Ava Smith is talking about how she probably, you know, she, she's a suspect right now because she was the last person to see Ava. I mean, Austin and everything like that. And she seemed like she's more mad about Austin. Like, oh, you know, even in death, he's still snake day causing me trouble and stuff. I'm just like, like, I get it. In a lot of ways, Austin was kind of a scumbag, even sleeping with her, knowing that, you know, he was hiding stuff, uh, Nicholas and everything like that, right? So I understand that she's a little bit, you know, well, she's a little bit more than pissed off because she felt like she got used. But she has to know somewhere that he did actually care for her in his own way. Like he got blackmailed by Cyrus and he, he pretty much kind of testified in Cyrus' behalf just to get you released. I'm like, damn, I got to count for something at this point. But she's all like mad at the fact that, you know, he's still causing her trouble. Now, this scene, with Carly and um, Brennan, I think that's his name. Apparently wasn't much to it. You know, Brendan, Brendan or what I guess was impressed by Carly. 
of her generosity towards the, um, you know, towards the homeless guy. And don't get me wrong, it's very nice. It's not something you should often probably do because you don't know. It, let's go with this one. Be careful. That's what I'm going to sit there and say. You know, you don't know what mental state that, um, you know, some of these people that are just kind of hanging outside are at. You know, and I get it, you know, it's daytime and, you know, she's probably seen them around a couple of times. Um, but still, just in general. He's also working for Bike. You know, I think he's probably the head of Bike. Because when the guy came back, I don't even remember his name. You know, he comes up to he comes up to you know Brennan or whatever. He's like, yeah, you know, saying he's not going to play ball. At this point, you know, I'm already sitting there thinking. He's just like, all right, so I guess we have to sit there and remove him now. But you know, Sonny can handle it. The problem is usually, um, especially back in the day, is that. In some ways, it was kind of rinse and repeat. I mean, don't get me wrong; it was it was still fun to watch. But a new villain would come to town. Eventually, Sonny would sit there and take care of him, or Jason. But the point is, eventually, they will go away. And maybe because he's been winning so much, to be honest, mostly by Jason. He has this whole thing in the city. He's like, "Oh, I would just blow over. I'm not. I'm not really too worried about it. And if it doesn't, then what?" I mean, Dex is cool, but he's not Jason. So. I don't know. Maybe Dex will sit there and surprise us all. Now, the last scene is with Liz and um, Ben. You know, talking about his case and everything like that. You know, what Ben is worried about is how he's going to come across as, you know, with the jury. You know, he's very standoffish, and he feels that he's, he's standoffish, he doesn't like to sit there and be questioned, and he's probably going to sit there and use a bunch of medical jargon that's going to go over most of these, you know, most of the jury's heads. And the only thing they're going to be sitting there thinking about is, what if it was my family? What if it was one of my family members? Now, let us sit there and try to encourage him by saying, oh, they're going to sit there and see this side of you. They're going to sit there and see that side of you. And I'm like, well, Liz, you can't really say that because it took you time to sit there and know who Finn is. You know, the jury's not going to have to, the jury's not going to sit there and spend the same amount of time knowing who Finn is underneath his standoff, his attitude. And I think that's what it really comes down to. What, what Marty, what Marty basically said was that you had to sit there and prove that you being at the hospital um, saving lives is a lot more valuable than if they let you go. And I guess Liz is just like, maybe we can sit there and work on you being more likable. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all that scene really comes down to. You know, I feel kind of bad for the Liz and Finn fans because that was literally probably the weakest part of this whole episode was that besides the Ava and Nina scene, that's just literally because they just recycled everything that wound up happening. That was probably the weakest, like maybe, okay, maybe the second weakest part. Um, because I really want to sit there and get into this whole Jerry thing Jerry trial thing and everything like that, I feel like that would be really interesting. Because let's be honest, um, nine times out of ten, their scenes are weak. They're weak, they're pointless, and you generally just don't really want to care. And it's sad because you do actually have two great characters. I know people who sit there and get Ben, whatever, a lot of slack or whatever, but I, I like Michael Easton. I feel like they could actually do something good with him. Um, I don't. I don't think it's the actor's fault because he's been in the soap opera run before. When he was on Port Charles, when he was Caleb, when he was John McBain. So if you give him something to do that's interesting, it'll work out great. And Rebecca or Becky, whatever the hell you want to sit there and call her, Liz, 
She's a great character when you give her something to do. When you have these scenes of them, I don't know, outside trying to gather maple sap and make it out in the shower and stuff like that. It's like, really? That's the best you could sit there and give them? So I feel bad for the fans that actually do like them because they don't give them anything interesting. And yeah, this isn't, for me, this is an interesting storyline so far. We just got to get there to see how it plays out. And hopefully it doesn't play out like that glorious scene of um, the mob guy Petro and Yuri. Because I was like, oh man, you know, Yuri seems like he's going to, you know, it's going to be really interesting. He talks about how, oh, you know, sometimes I'm nice and sometimes I'm not or something like that. And then it turns into a scene like that, that lasts a day that didn't really go anywhere. And it was like, are you kidding me? I don't know. Now, the question I want to sit there and ask before I sit there and wrap this video up, because I'm pretty sure I probably missed something. Um, so, Lois has been back for a while. And I did a video pretty much asking, you know, what do you thought of her character so far? Has she been really interesting? The thing about Lois is that she's a fan favorite, right? So, even just her being back, her accent, the nails, the fact that she's pretty, people really love her character. But I remember when I sit there and watch it back in the day and they would have these characters come in and they did stuff that was interesting. They weren't just there for fan service. They were actually there for the purpose. And I need to sit there and ask the audience, what have you liked about Lois since she's returned? Other than the fact that you just liked the character, what has you liked about her that you felt like, you know what, this was really interesting. I'm glad she was actually in this episode. I'm very curious because I am drawing a blank. So maybe I might have missed something. I feel like that's about it. But, you know, as always, I, I sit there and say, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll sit there and talk about all the shows, General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Born and Beautiful, and Young and the Restless. With that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Also, before I go, I'm going to be dropping a video for members only um, after my live stream. If you're not a member, definitely join because you want to be a part of this conversation of a uh, <laughs> live stream that happened last week. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Um, I got some thoughts on a... Um, On the situation, I'll say. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go out and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.